Welcome to the AI Guide on YouTube, where we focus on the human impact of AI. So, a viewer recently commented, AI is stupid and for lazy people that don't want to work hard. Like most comments, you know, there's some validity to that. But many people are just fascinated with AI. So fascinated, you won't believe what they are doing in their own backyard. I was surprised. So this story is called An Artificial Mind with a Lifelike Body. Amid a world of evolving AI, a Las Vegas man brings his creations to life. So hat tip to Jason Bracelin at the Las Vegas Review Journal. She's going to wake up. Just give her a second. Matt McMullen eyes his creation as her eyes flutter open and return, her gaze settling upon all the disembodied faces and mechanical mandibles surrounding her in this workshop where fake hair commingles with real ambition. Gradually, she stirs to life, this robot who doesn't look like one. So who is going to take me to Disneyland, the robot wonders, her words apropos of, well... We're not quite sure. Maybe she's just reacting to her environment. On a table nearby sits a small sign adorned with an image of Mickey Mouse and a quote from Walt Disney. If you dream it, you can do it, it reads. McMullen's dream? To build robots with a human look and feel like never seen before. And they aren't kidding. I'll put the link below the description. To this article, you're going to be blown away when you see what this dude has done. He's been at it for decades now, and this is his most realistic creation yet. This one is more advanced than the last one we built, McMullen notes. Arms and face covered with tattoos and pride, respectively. She's one of a kind. As artificial intelligence continues to evolve at a rapid pace, which frightens some and excites others, enabling robots to approximate their human creators to increasingly greater degrees, Las Vegas is getting all in on the game. So the next part of the article is called Growing Use of Humanoid Robots. There's the five aura humanoid robots that interact with visitors in the atrium of the sphere, as well as the tipsy robot bars at Planet Hollywood in the Venetian, where you can knock back a rum and coke poured by a made-from-metal bartender. Moreover, there's a number of robotics AI-based companies in the Vegas area, including BattleBots, Blackfire, Cobot Nation, Brainlike, Koshi.ai, and Turbine. I moved here 10 years ago, and to see all this growth in the tech space, it's always exciting, says Paul O., who is Lindsay Professor for Unmanned Aerial Systems at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, whose areas of expertise encompass robotics, autonomous systems, unmanned aerial ve vehicles, and humanoids. It continues to develop, and so I really do think there's a lot of potential here in Vegas. We've also seen over the past 10 years that there's more and more consumer-level products with robotics. I think more and more people are saying, yeah, I could do a driverless car, which is actually a robot. I could do virtual reality. That's an outgrowth of robotics. I can do 3D printing. That's also the domain of robotics and manufacturing. The list goes on and on, said O. Increasingly, said list includes humanoid robots, which O knows well firsthand. In 2022, students in his Drones and Autonomous Systems Lab advanced to the finals of the 10 million ANA Avatar X Prize, a worldwide competition to create a human robot avatar system. The student's creation named Avatar Hubo placed 11th overall. More recently, humanoid robots have made national news, as O notes. Last month at Global AI Conference, NVIDIA GTC, which is put on by tech company NVIDIA and draws tens of thousands of participants annually to San Jose, California, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang took the stage with nine humanoid robots and introduced the company's Project Groot endeavor, which will invest heavily in the further development of the technology. 2024 is the year of the humanoid. There's no robot hardware more general purpose 
NVIDIA research manager Dr. Jim Fan posted on X. All in. Tesla is also getting in on the game with its Optimus humanoid robot prototype, the latest version of which was unveiled last December. McMullen's attempting to take things even further. He wants his robots to appear and act more like people to serve any number of hypothetical purposes, from greeting you at the grocery and guiding you to the shampoo aisle if you need some head and shoulders, to delivering meds and checking your vitals at the hospital, to being an always-there-for-you life companion when you need someone or something to have a chat with. And by the way, for what it's worth, I think all that's coming. AI's growing prevalence in our daily lives has stoked plenty of fears. Will robots one day replace us mere flesh and bone mortals? But McMullen's not only embracing those fears, he's turning them on their meticulously sculpted robot heads. Nobody would ever think this is in my backyard, he says. If the eyes are indeed the window to the soul, what if there is no soul to peer into? This ranks high among the myriad challenges inherent in attempting to create realistic eyes for a comely shebot. And yet, when Robotics' latest creation scans the room, it doesn't feel as if she's doing so with vacant doll eyes or garage door eyelids that go up and down with a clear mechanical lurch. And they do mean real. <laughs> when she glances your way, it does feel as if she's looking at you, which may register as a bit creepy to some. More on that later. But even if fake flesh makes your flesh crawl, there's a clear craftsmanship to her gaze. Getting to this point wasn't easy. McMullen says it took him and his team a full year to develop her eyes alone. Speaking of time-consuming tasks, don't even get him started on how hard it is to make lifelike robot mitts, meaning hands. There are 100 more challenges attached just to the hands, he notes. Despite these difficulties, McMullen sounds far more enthusiastic than, than exasperated when addressing said challenges. He's an old pro at it by now, having been creating realistic figures since the late 1990s. Unlike many of his peers, McMullen comes from a fine arts background rather than one in robotics. He began sculpting when he was a teenager, attending art school for a time in his 20s, before landing a job with San Diego Halloween design company Disguise. One day around this time, the late 90s, he had an epiphany while he was in a department store. They had hired an actress to pretend to be a mannequin, and she was really good at it, McMullen recalls. For some reason, that stuck with me. I was like, wouldn't it be cool to have a mannequin that looks so real that people would think that it was? Kind of like an inverse of that experience. I started coming up with this like crazy idea of a hyper-realistic, posable mannequin. To this end, McMullen founded his own company, Abyss Creations, in 1996, which is perhaps best known for developing the real doll adult companion mannequin, the most deluxe versions of which can cost over $10,000. He sold thousands of them. McMullen then founded Realbotics in 2014 to bring a similar realism to robots. I've always had this idea and concept that robots could be companions in some way, he says. Whether they be for entertainment, or I feel like there are certain people who can benefit from having sort of a simulated relationship, a friendship with an AI-driven robot. Turns out, this is an intensely exacting endeavor this humanoid robot building thing. The process often begins with a digital representation of a given subject, which can then be 3D printed and turned into a clay sculpture. McMullen will spend one to two weeks sculpting the face alone, lasering in on every detail right down to the pores and skin tone. From there, a mold is created and hardware added, eventually bringing it all to mechanized life. The whole process takes two to three months from start to finish, with McMullen heading a small team of four to five workers, depending on the project. 
On this day, McMullen is joined in the shop by a head assembler. They mean that literally, assembler of heads. Tim Johns, who works on a series of robot skulls behind him, each of which takes about a day to complete. Johns, a San Diego native with a background in construction, who began working with McMillan nearly two decades ago. For the first few years, robotics focused on creating robot heads attached to bus, their most novel feature being detachable faces that enable one robot to become multiple characters, an innovation that the company patented. Some of their creations are bought for commercial purposes, like an overseas robotics client who leases them out for promotional purposes. Others buy individuals who just want their own robot to converse with. The company's latest advancement, Full Body Robots. They made two in 2023 and are looking to increase production this year. Back in 2016, when we were tinkering with the face, I would not have imagined that six, seven years later, I'd have a full body, McMullen says. He also probably wouldn't have imagined it having the capability to deliver corny punchlines. As this hit or miss attempt at android humor underscores, it's one thing to make a robot look human, but it's another entirely to make it act human. Still, the fact that the robot even has an AI abetted personality to speak of is a sign of the progress McMullen has made, who's programmed it with 12 customizable traits, each of which can be assigned a number from 1 to 3 to amplify or reduce a trait, depending on the client's preference. So this that's really amazing that this is already to this point, all due to AI. Basically, what you end up with is three traits that are kind of more dominant, he explains. Some of the traits, they're typical things like cheerful or educated or intellectual. If you push those up, then she's going to talk more about sciencey things. And if you push them down, she might want to talk about shopping instead. McMullen's currently working on AI technology where customers could essentially build a robot psyche from the ground up. I think eventually as AI technology progresses, which it is very quickly, he continues, we're going to have these types of things where you can have full on conversations and it will remember all of it and it'll assign a profile to you as an acquaintance. AI is not going to stop. It feels like the world is on the cusp of this revolution. But is the world ready for it? Civilization as we know it is over. (laughs) That's the title of this part. I don't understand why people are against the robots. Comedian Whitney Cummings is digging into the closing bit of her 2019 Netflix comedy special, Can I Touch It?, The segment ends with Cummings being joined on stage by her robot doppelganger created by McMullen and company, who were there for the show's taping in Washington, D.C. At the end of the special, there's behind-the-scenes footage capturing the making of the robot, which culminates with Cummings being her mechanized self for the first time. She tears up because of how incredibly lifelike it is. And she's not kidding. (laughs) There are real concerns about the technology that McMullen's helping to pioneer. There's the uncanny valley effect, for starters, which was coined by pioneering Japanese robotics professor Masahiro Mori in the early 1970s and refers to the feeling of unease some people have when confronted by human-like robots. Though the concept has been much debated over the years, oh, the UNLV professor suggests that Uncanny Valley could become less of an issue as this kind of tech becomes more ingrained in the everyday lives of successive generations, which will definitely happen. I've said it several times. See the movie iRobot if you haven't yet. Now that we're past the pandemic, we are also seeing a Gen Z and Gen Alpha that have a different interaction with technology than older folks like myself. So I think what responses you get about Uncanny Valley, one needs to be mindful of the demographic. And that is so true. Once you get used to something, 
it doesn't bother you anymore. You don't even notice it. Still, there's plenty of apprehension over AI in general. In March 2023, over 1,000 tech industry leaders signed an open letter warning of the potential dangers of AI, citing profound risk to society, which has garnered tens of thousands of additional signatures since then. Mullen acknowledges how polarizing robots like his can be. I think it's very subjective person to person, he says. Some people are fully fascinated and very open to the idea of having a robot that can look like a human being. Other people are vehemently opposed to it. For instance, he shows off a new feature he's been working on for his female robot. She's mounted on a motorized circular platform kind of like a giant Roomba, enabling her to roam around the room. Its movements are a little shaky. There are still improvements to be made. McMullen notes that more struts probably need to be added to the next model. Still, watching it in motion, we can't help but think that robots might already be a bit more like us than we acknowledge namely imperfect. You really don't know how things are going to work or not work, McMullen explains, until you build them. So check out this article. It's mind-blowing. I cannot believe how realistic these robots are. And everything this guy says in this article echoes our themes here on the AI Guide. AI can't be stopped. It's coming. You're going to have to deal with it. Learn as much as you can about it. Prepare yourself for a future full of not only robots, but AI-enabled technology that you need to be able to use and work with. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and share. Also, please support us on Patreon. We really appreciate your support. TED AI 2024 has been announced to go to it and bring you live breaking news like last year, we need your support on Patreon. So please support us. A dollar a month, five dollars a month, big difference. Thanks so much. Take care. See you next time. Bye.